Good morning and welcome to Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. Today we're going to be in the book of Amos, chapter 8, verses 11 through 12. The title of this message is A Spiritual Famine in the Land. If you're there, we'll read our scripture, beginning with verse 11 of chapter 8. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the west, or I'm sorry, to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for all of these people here today. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would open our hearts and minds, open our ears and open our very souls. Help us to hear from you today. I pray for the sick and shut in. I pray for those who have lost loved ones. I pray, Lord, for those who are awaiting test results, those who are in hospitals and nursing homes. Lord, those who need Jesus today, I pray that you would let your Holy Spirit roam up and down these aisles and just just touch hearts and change lives today. Be with our men and women who serve in the military. Be with our First responders, especially our police officers, watch over them and protect them. And you just take control of this service today and let everything that's said, everything that's done, be done in a fashion that brings honor and glory to your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I'm sure that most of us would agree that for the most part, we here in the United States of America, have been blessed when it comes to our material needs. I also believe that without a doubt, our country today is swiftly headed in the direction of a spiritual famine. I think maybe we're already there. Many churches in the United States have become slack in the preaching and the teaching of God's holy word. They've fallen short on teaching and preaching the entire council of the Word of God. They are choosing instead to conform to the standards of today's world, which change like the wind every day, rather than the standards of God, which have not changed since the beginning of time. Yes, today our country is politically correct, but unfortunately our country is Godly incorrect. Today there are a large number of so-called Christians, those who have a form of godliness, but know little of true godliness. In 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 4, it says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at the appearing of his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. My friend, the time will come, and I believe it's already here today, when itching ears will be tickled by preachers who do not preach the Holy Word of God. Many creatures bow to the wishes of their congregations who are looking for warm, fuzzy feelings rather than the truth of the Word. <coughs> Excuse me. It's been said, some people go to church to close their eyes while others go to church to hide the clothes. In other words, many do not go to church to hear sound doctrine. How about you? What's your reason for going to church? Why did you come here today? They don't want to hear the Word of God. They want to substitute itching ears. They don't want to hear that they are sinners. They don't want to hear that the lost sinners in this world are going to die and go to hell unless they repent. 
Instead, they want to hear how good they are, how good mankind is. They want to hear soft things to do with love. They, they do not want to hear about sinful mankind and, and the fact that mankind needs to be saved. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verses 9 and 10, it says that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seer, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us, right things, speaking to us, smooth things, prophesy, deceits. In today's America, the man of God who opens his Bible is rejected while the shallow religious entertainers become celebrities. And itching ears soon will become deaf ears as people turn away from the truth and believe man-made fables. 1 Peter 4.11 says, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Christ Jesus, in whom he be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let's read chapter or verse 11 of our text again. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. I think we're there today. There are many scriptures in the Bible that speak of famines and of droughts, but this particular scripture is speaking of a famine of the Word of God. In this chapter, Amos is speaking of an absence, a shortage, a time of hunger, a time of thirsting for the Word of God, people running from sea to sea, from north to east, and to and fro, seeking and searching for the Word of God and not being able to find it. God is tired of the way His people were doing. The merchants were keeping religious festivals, but not in the spirit of worship. They couldn't wait for the holy days and Sabbaths to be over so they could go back to making money. All they were interested in was doing better for themselves, even if it meant cheating others, even if it meant being immoral and deceitful, even if it meant taking advantage of others, those less fortunate than themselves. <coughs> Excuse me, does any of this sound familiar today? Look around, what do you see? Do you think God may be tired of the way that America is doing? We're still murdering babies. We have banned the Bible reading and prayer in our schools. We have changed the nature of mankind by legalizing same-sex marriage. We have taken Christ out of Christmas. And a past president actually told the world, he made an announcement to the whole wide world that we are no longer a Christian nation. And our young folks today, all across this great nation, they are calling not only for the death of Israel, but also for the death of the United States of America. Do you think God might think we are ripe for punishment? After all, it appears that people in our society today are only interested in bettering themselves. Even if it means cheating others, even if it means being immoral and deceitful, even if it means taking advantage of those less fortunate than themselves. You see, their heart's not focused on God. Their heart is focused on themselves. It's all about me, 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 me. They put on a religious front for others. But my friend, God knows their heart. He knows what lies in their heart. He knows what lies in your heart. 
in my heart. He is not pleased because the people do not have an appetite for His Word. The true believer today knows how wonderful and how great God is and realizes that He has their greatest need. He knows that their greatest need is a personal, intimate love relationship with Jesus Christ. No one can be truly happy without Jesus. He is the answer to your problems. He is the answer to the problems of this world that we live in today. But all across this nation today, there's a huge number of people sitting in churches that are simply dried up. They've been fed on milk for so many years, they're almost anemic to the meat of the Word of God. Many of these churches use different translations of the Bible, which for the sake of truth we will call these translations perversions. Once while on vacation, Linda and I attended a church where a preacher used seven different perversions of the Bible during one message. Talk about confusion. Who is the author of confusion? It is Satan. On another occasion, we, except for the pastor, were the only ones in the whole congregation with a Bible in their hand. Everybody else in that church was staring at a screen or looking at a phone. Where do all these various perversions of the Bible come from? The answer is simple. They come from the devil. He wants to pervert the Word of God. He wants to misguide the people of the world and add to the confusion and to the chaos that is running rapid in our society today. Jesus is the living Word. And the King James Version of the Bible is the written Word for the English-speaking folks. We would never accept another individual as the living Word. So why would we accept another written word? I'd like to see all churches filled to capacity and worship getting God in spirit and in truth. But folks, there is a spiritual famine all across our land today. By swaying multitudes of people to set under these perversions of God's word, the devil knows. He knows that a lot of them folks are going to end up being in hell with him. In the book of Matthew 23, 13, Jesus said, But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. And then in Matthew 23, 15, he carries on and says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Matthew 4, 4, Jesus said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by the every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. There are some people today that do not even know that they are starving for God's greatness, for His holiness, for His righteousness, for His presence, for His purpose and for His power. They are literally starving to death spiritually for lack of the Word of God, and they don't even realize it. Jesus is the bread of life for the starving soul. Jesus is the living water, and He alone can quench a thirsty soul. 
we see on our TVs, on social media, and the internet every day, where people in all parts of the world are ready to kill one another in the name of their religion. But folks, it's not about religion. Religion is sending thousands upon thousands of people to hell every day. What's important is the personal, intimate love relationship that you need to have with Jesus Christ. In John 5.40 it says, And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. Jesus is talking about life everlasting. But there's a famine in the land today from which the starving multitudes are dying. In 1 Corinthians 1.17 it says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolishness. But to us which are saved, it is the power of God. Have you ever wondered how preachers and teachers using different perversions of the Bible can tell the same truth word for word? Just because a man gets in the pulpit does not mean that he is God's man. Linda and I know of a preacher that didn't believe in the virgin birth. Nor did he believe that Jesus Christ was sinless. In 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15, it says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. In Romans ten seventeen it says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 13 through 15 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? So my friend, who, who, who should we send to preach the Word of God? The answer to that question is all of us. Every believer in Christ is called to preach the Gospel to others. Just remember, God is not interested in filling empty churches. He is not interested in filling... I'm sorry, He is interested in filling empty hearts and empty lives. He is looking for truthful people that will have a hunger for things of the Lord. We see the famine all around us. God expects us to be telling everyone we meet about Jesus while we still have the time and while we still have the opportunity. In John three seventeen and 18, it says, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. But let me remind you, God wants us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. We need to attempt to quench the famine by sharing with others. Sharing His love 
We need to praise Him. We need to be excited about what He's doing all around us. We need to thank Him for the miracles that He's performing in our lives and in the lives of those around us. The world around us is busy and extremely good at spreading negativity and chaos. It's in just the last few months in our church family, we have personally witnessed events that only God could perform. I call them miracles. We need to share these exciting and uplifting events with a world that is living in despair, a world that is caught up in this famine of spiritual weakness. We as believers in Jesus have something to be excited about. I believe that Jesus is coming back. I believe that He's coming back very, very soon. And as you go and leave this place today, I pray that you will go and preach this message every place you go. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. My final question for you this morning is, are you ready? If Jesus comes today, are you ready to meet Him? Are you ready to, to face Him? If you've never entered into an intimate, personal love relationship with Jesus Christ, I want to give you that opportunity this morning. You say, Brother Bob, how can I do that? It's very simple. You say a simple little prayer. Prayer doesn't save you. But you, you just ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins. Something like this. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe He is your Son. I believe He went to the cross and died for my sins. I believe that He was buried and that you lifted Him out of that grave and that He is alive today. And I ask Jesus to forgive me of my sins and to use me for the rest of my life for His honor and for His glory. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> Excuse me. If you prayed that prayer, Jesus heard you. And He wiped away all your sins. <coughs> you say, okay, Brother Bob, what do I do now? You need to find you a Bible teaching, Bible preaching, Bible believing church. <clears throat> and get involved with it. Don't just go, you get involved. You need to find you a quiet place to read and study God's Word. A place where you can talk to God and listen to God. You need to follow Jesus in scriptural baptism. And most importantly of all, you need to tell others what the Lord has done for you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this Word. I pray that it would change somebody's life today. That you would just touch their heart and soften it and let your Holy Spirit penetrate it, Lord. And I do ask these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen.